Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and it's time for your Monday through Friday episode of The Last Drip where we take a look at top NASDAQ and NYSC gainers and see if we can find some trades for the next day and see what's going on with the market. So let's dive right in and not waste any time. The SPY after the pullback last week having a rebound today but hitting the 20-day moving average at that 421. Like I was saying in the live stream trading this morning, if you join me, this could be a bull trap. And the reason why I say this is if you look back last year on the SPY where we had the pullback during COVID, it had two weeks of a little drop, then two weeks of a rebound. And this rebound right here was a bull trap. This got people stuck in there. If you don't know what a bull trap is, bulls are looking for the market to go up. And they get trapped sometimes in positions thinking the market's going to continue to go up. And then they get dumped on. So we're seeing a similar type pattern here. You see two weeks there where the market was kind of pushing down. And then we've got little itty bitty green candles. Little bitty buying over the last three weeks here and then last week we had that big pullback and we're starting the week right here so this could be another one of those bull traps and we could see the market still pull back there's a lot of stuff coming out of the feds right now and a lot of it is bs all you have to do is read it and you will see how they're contradicting themselves they can't come out and say that there's problems in the economy or the market will crash now we could have a little double bounce like we had back here but all of these red candles all of these days where it was red this is showing a lot more selling in the stock market than buying to me this looks like a lot of institutional money has been slowly getting out of the market because they know what's coming and as i've been saying for a while it's only a matter of time and tower of terror on to the top nasdaq gainers so torchlight this one we talked about quite a bit last week in the last drip episodes because it was making moves almost daily got a huge gap up this morning and just continue to run all day staying above the 20 day and the 50 day dropped a little bit there for a second but the 50 held it up and just still going in after hours on the 20 day so they've got a lot going on and it is an energy stock energy stocks have been hot and this one just continues to run so we could see it continue to run if buying keeps coming in here like like we're currently getting but so far, this has a, a very nice uptrend started over the last two days. And as long as that trend line holds, which is about where the 50-day is, then uh, this could easily keep going. So RAVN Raven is getting acquired, and that's why you see the big gap up there and it just going sideways, nothing happening. MOXC, this got a very nice run. Had a nice crossover on the 15-minute there, the 20-day crossing the other EMAs and just pushed all the way up to 20 right before after hours before it sell, sold off but it is holding up most of its gains it's still at 15 dollars so this could be one to keep an eye on this is another one of those consumer discretionary stocks apparently that we've been seeing moving a lot of the retail and apparel have been getting some nice rebounds and you can see it on the daily where this has been kind of climbing over the last couple of months from previous lows just basically rebounding from COVID just taking a lot longer than a lot of the other sectors USEG getting a nice quick pop this is another energy company just moving in sympathy with the other energy stocks was down at uh, 408 there and pushed all the way up to 528 at after hours so we're seeing this same thing kind of happen on the spy as last week where we were having stocks pop quick in the morning and pull back the rest of the day and then some of them getting some nice moves in power hour so power hour may be the place to trade here if this trend continues we'll see AYTU this is the stock we never speak of but it is getting a little pop just at a lower year 473 there and just bounced up to the 50 day got rejected uh, it could slowly keep climbing but this company the reason we don't speak its name is because last year during COVID 
Some of us on the channel played this looking for a big breakout. There was a lot of hype, but this company was pretty much full of, yeah. So anyway, SWBI, this is Smith & Wesson. We talked about it Friday, and it just continuing to rip with those great uh, earnings after everybody bought guns, and there's that dividend coming out soon. Uh, I liked it down at 20, but it's getting a little high now. It just hit a high year of 28.13, doubling its low of year. But it is looking pretty bullish. It could continue to run, especially if the country gets in more turmoil. People are going to keep buying guns and ammo. Wish has been one of the Wall Street bets, Reddit type of deals. Now, it is making an interesting move on the daily chart. Has come up, basically broke this triangle of consolidation. And the 20 is very close to getting over that 50-day moving average. Last time it got held up at the 100-day, got held up again. So if this is going to continue to rip, that 20 day is going to have to cross that 50, which means the price of the candle is going to have to cross the 1422 area. And 15 is also going to be strong resistance. So really, for this to continue running, it needs to break over 15. Next, we got GOED. I uh, got a price target raised to $12. Just at a low of year of $1.70. So that is a really low price for this it was all the way up at 18 not even a couple of weeks ago and had a big sell-off for some reason but basically getting a bounce from this low that's about all that is could be one to keep on watch as it is still pretty low price compared to what it normally is the whole entire year it's been around that seven to eight dollar area before it had this big crash hook. so on to the nysc we got aei and i did trade aei today it had a big rip in pre-market super good pr very good pr they started working with tesla anytime a penny stock works with a bigger company that is always good news so they did get a very big spike sold off at market open and started making this nice little consolidation back up so i got in there in that 665 area and then i added again at 694 looking for it to break over seven it did have a quick break up to 730 but i was looking for 750 which was where these two indicators were the 200 and 100 and it didn't quite get up there so i ended up getting stopped out around 646 took a little 12 dollar loss not a big deal but just a breakdown in that play that's going to happen not every play is going to be a winner but the lesson is still lock in your profits when you have them because this market does not care about your plan <laughs> stick to your plan if it's starting to not go your way it's better just to lock it out instead of try to hold through this looking for it to rip again it did look like it might rip again there but I uh, just sold off the rest of the way. Next we got GBR. And this thing's just been kind of slowly climbing. Had a little crossover right here back in May. And it's been going up the 50 day until the day where it really exploded. No news or anything. But nice move up to 940. And you can see this thing has ran big in the past. This day back here it ran 216 all the way up to 3099. So that's actually one I'm going to add to the watch list. Because this is a known spiker and all the traders in the market know this thing can spike to $30.99, then they're going to start paying attention, seeing it spike up from where it was at. KOS, another energy stock. Uh, they got an upgrade price target to $780. It's uh, quite a bit higher float, $400 million there. And it's been on an uptrend since last November, so it must be a pretty strong energy company. But really getting a move today with a crossover here on the 15 minute over all EMAs and running up to that 370. So not a huge move, but a decent move. 315 to 370, that's, you know, 55 cents. You could have made a decent profit there uh, holding this for most of the day. But it has hit this kind of top right here at 370. So it may have to pull back a little bit before it tries to break that. But if energy stocks keep moving like they are, that may not be that big a deal. ENG, this is a oil and gas company. Just another energy oil stock here, just moving with the whole sector. But did make a very nice move from 275 up to 349 in after hours. Had a crossover on the EMA right there this morning in after hours. So on the 15 minute, uh, you did have a chance to get in there if you were looking at this type of play 
So energy sector, oil sector, both of those are super hot, and they look like they're continuing to be hot. They've been hot the last two weeks, so it definitely looks like we have a trend. On the rest of these down this list, not much volume, so nothing really to cover there. I do have my swing on VINO. I am still holding. It had a nasty little dip. Got down here to the 200 day on the 15 minute. Uh, and that's the same place as the 200 on the daily chart. Had a lot of selling pressure this last four days, but still able to hold half of its gains and get pops every day of buying volume. I think this is probably going to rip. You can see that 20 day. Uh, over the 100 day moving average now and coming close to that 200 all it has to do is this price has to push up and drag this 20 day across this 200 and this thing will go nuts so i actually added to this position uh, right down there at 607 area and i added in i added to it on my charles swap street smart edge platform as well so all all in all right now i've got probably almost 200 shares of this that I've been building this position on looking for uh, a really big push up on this again, like kind of like a candle like this, a big rip. Because right now we're just consolidating nicely and we're holding the, that 200 day, that $6 area, which is where I like it at. And saying that, this also could crash back down to this $4 area. We do have three EMAs as support right now, but because it is such a low float, and we're seeing these big upper wicks this normally is a sign of a sell-off coming but it's happened three days in a row and there's still not been a sell-off just be aware if you are in this looking for that rip that it is such a low float that it could crash below these indicators at any time so i did take another trade today on viri this one i caught on the scanner i saw a bunch of volume starting to pop up on it and it had a little crossover there. So I got in in the second candle at 709. I got up there pretty high, kind of looking for a third leg up, but it did not get it. Couldn't hold this support area uh, at $7 and I got stopped out at 680. So it's a little risky play buying in that high. It was getting very good momentum, but you can see it broke over that 100 day and then pushed back down under the 100 day. So the 100 day is pretty strong resistance held up there as well so i'm down a little bit on the week but nothing crazy nothing that we can't come back from as long as vi and no doesn't crash out on me <laughs> at a weird time like open up pre-market and three in the morning or anything like that but i'm i like that play so i'm pretty confident in it that's why i kind of threw quite a bit at it so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below about the overall stock market and where it's heading and about any plays that you think have some potential Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.